Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Optimizing Car Performance Modifications. Now, this is a second in two videos covering the use of accelerometers. In the first video, I introduced to you the G curve. The G curve is an example of an analog accelerometer. It's very simple in construction. It comprises a curved glass tube. Inside the glass tube is a small steel ball and inside that tube is damping fluid, probably just water. In use, the device is attached to the side window of the car, so it's pointing in the direction that you are accelerating. And as you accelerate, the ball climbs the tube. The higher the ball climbs the tube, the harder the vehicle is accelerating. And as I said in that first video, you write down the readings from this at every, say, 1000 RPM which then allows you to plot the curve of actual car acceleration. I also said the G-curve is no longer available. Um, unfortunately, that company appears to have gone out of business. But there is a very, very good replacement. What I'm holding here is a Levo gauge, which is a brand name of clinometer. It's constructed in just the same way as the G-curve, with a curved glass tube and a ball that rises uh, up the arms of that glass tube as you accelerate. It's sold in yachting supply shops, boating supply shops, and it's sold as a clinometer, that is, a device that measures angle of heel, how much the boat is actually leaning. The ball moves up the tube in the same way. But it can be used exactly as the G-curve was used, as an accelerometer. Now, if you look at it, you'll see that I've made a, a bracket for it. Uh, I've got um, two pieces of plastic, one with the um, levo gauge mounted on it and two suction caps. And if you look at it like that, you can see that I've angled it. So that's why when it's mounted on the window, it's actually a vertical instrument. You want it to be vertical in the car. Now, how do you use this? How do you actually go out and test? So you're going to need a stretch of road where you can use full throttle from low RPM right through to high RPM. If there are no roads available where you can accelerate, say, to full throttle from uh, 1,000 RPM to 6,000 RPM in, say, second gear, then you're not going to be able to use it. Anywhere you can use full throttle, in any of the gears, you could actually use this particular device. So the first step, if you're buying a Levo gauge, is to make a bracket that allows it to be mounted on, say, a, a side window uh, and mounted vertically. The next step is to go to the road where you're doing your testing. Now, very few roads are dead flat. What you'll find is if you stick it on the side glass and then level it so that the ball is at zero and then swap the car around so it's facing the other direction, you'll find that you're probably measuring a, a, an angle on the road. It's no longer at level. So what you do is you set this so that the error facing in each direction is the same but in different directions. In other words, if the road had actually been level, it would be reading zero. Now, you need an assistant, and that assistant has to have something to write down uh, notes with, write down numbers with. You drive along at a constant speed, at the lowest RPM you can in your test gear, say 1000 RPM in second gear, and then you put your foot flat to the floor, and every 1000 RPM that you see on the tachometer, you yell out, now! And every time you yell now, your passenger writes down the reading that they're measuring, they're reading off the clinometer, in this case using it as an acceler accelerometer. Now, in high performance cars, it will all be happening too quickly to do it every 1000 RPM. So you can do it in multiple runs. You could do 2000, 4000 and 6000 RPM in one run, and then 1000, 3000 and 5000 in another. In a really high performance car, just do one RPM at a time. So you'll see you end up with a list of instantaneous acceleration figures corresponding to specific RPM. You can plot that as a graph. I use Excel, makes a pretty graph. And you've got the actual acceleration curve of your car. Make a change, and that change could be anything that changes the performance of the car. Intake, exhaust, it could be um, the cam camshaft change, which is a really good example because it's easy to lose power at one end of the rev range and pick it up at the other end of the rev range. I've even used it when I've been mapping programmable management. Uh, top end fueling, top end ignition, 
I just wanted to make sure that if I was running a bit more extra advanced, which is obviously going to be getting closer to detonation, that I was actually getting that performance improvement that uh, you know I wanted. No point in going more dangerous in ignition timing uh, if in fact you're not getting the performance increase. So you can use this approach to measure any change that you're making to the car. Any change. And that's what makes it so incredibly powerful and such an effective tool. So I highly recommend it to you. It's a very simple, straightforward testing method. It's very accurate. It's very repeatable. Make sure you level it though, so you take into account any angle on the road. And it's always best practice to do testing in two different directions and then average those figures. In the book, I cover how to turn those figures into the torque curve, the shape of the torque curve of the engine, and that's a very, very straightforward thing to do. And just slightly more complexly, I also talk about how you can turn those figures into the shape of the power curve. So you can actually see if you're getting 10% more power at the top end or 5% less power or whatever it might be. Simple, straightforward, accurate, basically no cost, and it can measure any change that you make to your engine performance. Now, I could go even further actually. I could point out that you can also use it to measure any change to performance from anything you change on the car, aerodynamics, the whole lot. But let's keep it as straightforward as we can, and engine performance is the really big one that you can measure with this technique in terms of changes. Lots more in the book uh, where I cover using this technique, uh, a whole chapter on, on using uh, accelerometers to measure on-road performance, working out where the best gear change points are. You can do so much. It's a very, very exciting technique. Very few people use it. I'm not sure why. I think it's probably because they've never seen the technique before, but I highly recommend it to you. Thank you.